The 2024 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded jointly to Victor Ambrose and Carrie Rufkoen for their groundbreaking discovery of microRNA and its crucial role in post-transcriptional gene regulation. This video is a humble attempt to explain their groundbreaking discovery. They published their results in 1993 in the journal Cell and these are the two publications. First, let us understand why we study gene regulation. Let us explain with a simple figure. As we know, the flow of genetic information is from DNA to mRNA to protein. Every cell in the body contains the same genetic information, in our case approximately 20,000 genes according to Human Genome Project that is organized in our chromosomes. Even though all cells possess the same genetic information, how a nerve cell becomes a nerve cell with a specialized function entirely different from a muscle cell or an epithelial cell. For example, let us take these four types of cells. This is neuron or nerve cell and this is a muscle cell, this is an intestinal cell and this is a eosinophil. The reason is as you see here, only the correct set of genes is active in each specific cell type to perform a specialized function. So all cells are having the same genome as you see here. In neurons, this blue region of the genome has set of genes that is activated, that is transcribed and translated to form a protein that makes a cell neuron or that will give the cell the functions of neuron. Similar is the case with this muscle cells. Another set of proteins are turned on or activated forming different types of proteins that gives the quality of muscle cells or that becomes a muscle cell. The same is with the case of intestinal cell and also this blood cell. In simple terms, the genes that is expressed in neurons may not be expressed in muscle cells. This differential gene expression in different cells is achieved through precise gene regulation. Any problem with gene regulation may lead to serious diseases such as cancer, diabetes or autoimmunity. Therefore, understanding the regulation of gene activity has been an important goal for many decades. Now the background. From 1960s onwards, we know that specialized proteins known as transcription factors can bind to specific regions in DNA and control the flow of genetic information by determining which mRNAs are produced. After that, thousands of transcription factors have been identified and for a long time it was believed that the main principles of gene regulation had been solved and transcription factors are involved in gene regulation. But in 1993, Ambrose and Rukoen published their findings describing a new level of gene regulation mediated by microRNA that revealed a completely new principle of gene regulation. Now let us understand the experiment. Ambrose and Ruf Kuhn were interested in studying how different cell types develop. They chose the model organism Cynorhabditis elegans, a small round worm as you see here, a model organism due to its simple structure and well-defined developmental stages. They focused on developmental timing investigated genes that controls the timing of developmental processes in C. elegans. The two genes studied were LIN4 and LIN14 and they used two mutant strains of worms, a LIN4 mutant as you see here and LIN14 mutant. They wanted to identify the mutated genes and understand their function. Ambrose had shown that LIN4 appeared to be a negative regulator of LIN14 gene. But how? That's the question. And the hypothesis was they proposed that LIN4 gene acted as a negative regulator or inhibits the LIN14 expression. But how this is regulated? And they conducted the gene cloning experiment. Ambrose cloned the LIN4 gene and discovered that it produced a short RNA molecule as you see here that did not code for a protein. He termed it as microRNA and this was surprising. Then the next question was how this small RNA from LIN4 inhibit LIN14. So how might this work? Ruf Kuhn cloned the LIN14 gene and found out that LIN4 microRNA matched complementary sequences in the LIN14 mRNA. 
Then they compared their findings and found complementary sequence matching. And they did the experimental validation. And they validated this with further experiments. Showing that LIN4 microRNA, as you see here, LIN4 microRNA, this red colored, binds to LIN14 mRNA, this blue one, inhibiting its translation into protein rather than blocking mRNA production. So as there is complementarity, that can this LIN4 and LIN14, there are many complementary regions so that they can hybridize to form double-stranded RNA, thus blocking the translation or inhibiting the translation. As this is taking place in the transcription stage, this is a transcriptional gene regulation. Thus, a new principle of gene regulation was revealed that is mediated by a previously unknown type of RNA called microRNA. So, in short, microRNA, as you see here, is a class of small RNA molecule that bind to the complementary sequences in the target mRNA, as you see here, leading to either inhibition of protein synthesis or degradation of that mRNA. This process is essential for fine-tuning gene expression. The results were published in 1993 in two articles in the journal Cell, and these are the articles. Now let us understand the significance of this discovery. First is the evolutionary significance. This unusual mechanism of gene regulation was considered a specific case of C. elegans, likely relevant to humans and other complex organisms. But in 2000, Ruf Kuhn's research group published their discovery of another microRNA encoded by the LED7 gene. Unlike LIN4, the LED7 gene was highly conserved and present throughout the animal kingdom. Further research revealed that microRNA regulation is conserved across many species, including humans, leading to the identification of over a thousand microRNAs in the human genome. Now we know that cells and tissues do not develop normally without microRNAs. Mutations in genes coding for microRNAs have been found in humans, causing conditions such as congenital hearing loss, eye and skeletal disorders. Abnormal microRNA regulation can contribute to disease such as cancer and genetic disorders, emphasizing the importance of their discovery in understanding cellular processes. Ambrose and Rufkun's seminal discovery in the small worm C. elegans was surprising and revealed a new dimension to gene regulation essential for all complex life forms. And that is it. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much for your attention. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.